Hey fellas, how's it going? This is Diorama update number 29. We got a little bit to talk about. We got some work stuff to talk about. Got Operation Ripper, Battle for France, and Invasion of Poland IO to discuss. So let's get right into it. Uh, first thing um, about work, get that out of the way. I know I told you guys like two updates ago that I might be gone for six months. That's no longer. Uh, I was in the infantry, but since I'm getting out of the Marine Corps within the next year, I got moved to a spot where it's more like a nine to five job and I can start getting my family ready to move and finding jobs in the civilian world. Trying to do a course for an IT job. I think that'd be really neat. So uh, that means I've got more time here, whether it's with my family, here in the hobby room, uh, or, you know, calling my folks back home or whatever. So that, that's good. That's a good thing. Uh, I was expecting to be gone for like six months. And uh, that was gonna suck, but I'm not, so uh, let's get into it. If you haven't seen it already, I posted a video about this uh, Rice's Red Devils Easy 8. I love, I'll say it one more time, I love this tank, uh, the Easy 8. Such a big, beautiful beast. The Sherman is my favorite tank family, it just looks good. All right, it's unfortunate how thin the armor was back, you know, in the A1s and stuff, but. Um, yeah, uh, but for Operation Ripper, all that's left is the figure set here. It's five figures. I haven't built them yet, uh, but my plan is next two days or so, hopefully tomorrow night, uh, I will build these and prime them. And then leading into up to Sunday, because I go, I go back to work on Monday. Uh, so I have like a four day weekend, which is really nice. Uh, good break from work so give me plenty of time to hang with the family and build these guys that way this diorama can be completed and I can move on to bigger and better things uh, but with that is the, the figure set and the plaque so I'm doing something kind of different with the plaque this time you you've all seen if you've seen my videos before all my plaques are like single they vary in shape and size right some you know they're typically the length and kind of the length and width of the diorama base the afghan one's a little bigger uh that one's just straight up glued on but yeah this one there's going to be two plaques so the first one is going to be this um uh, operations map with the operation ripper description on top so if you want to pause read and look at that operational map i'll give you just a second to do that and basically, I cut that into a square using balsa wood as always, uh, put it right in here. It's going to cover the rock face a little bit, but I'm willing to put that up there for, you know, that detail. And then as, you know, my usual, I'll have the Operation Ripper, the date, the place, and kind of who's there, 25th ID and the 89th uh, MTB. Got a picture of one of the Rice's Red Devils and some infantry. That's the Marine Corps infantry, like a 30 cal. And then you got a operations map from the Chinese perspective and then two reporting papers that'll be going uh, around the little camp here. So those two are the last things that are needed for this diorama and then it'll be completed. So my goal, my goal, don't hold me to this, but my goal is Sunday evening this thing is completed, you know, Monday comes around and I can actually post pictures, the slideshow of the diorama. That's my goal. We'll see if it happens or not. Uh, now on to France. So I started this a while back and <laughs> just never got around to finishing it. Uh, but I'm looking to finish this one up because I'm getting really tired of just looking over there and seeing the, uh, the turretless fucking R35. It's just sad. So I'm going to finish that at some point. And then uh, for other dioramas I need to finish, I need to eventually finish that down bird in Vietnam. And I think that's the only, oh, the course, the invasion of uh, Market Garden and Black Hawk Down Dio. I really haven't started that one yet though. But the next big one I'm gonna be focusing on is the invasion of Poland. So let's get kind of into this. Uh, before actually before I get into the build itself uh, 
you probably seen I showed you guys in like uh, the last update I think there's a tank sitting there and it was kind of knocked out and that was the uh, the T26 B now I'm a I'm a goober and I built the wrong tank so this is a Russian tank this is a Polish tank and uh, I got them confused because they look very similar of course this one has a ring around uh, the turret and it's obviously named different but uh, it was a dollar, two dollars. I got them at the same place. If you look kind of at a distance, they kind of look alike. So uh, I was just a silly goose and built the wrong tank. Now, this tank doesn't look very hard to build. I could probably, this is like a day build, honest to God. Uh, oh, wait. Oh, look at that. I put them in the wrong box. Wow, that's funny. All right, well, this is the one I'm building. I just switched the contents out, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's only two sprues, fairly simple, and it has, uh, they're not rubber, but they're not plastic. I don't know what the hell kind of material the tracks are, but uh, it has a little piece there that connects them. I'm trying to, I'm trying to form them in the box for a day or two before I actually build this thing and glue it. That way it, because they were straightened out and they've been in the box for God knows how many years. And look how old this paper is, like... I've got a newspaper from 9-11, and the newspaper is not that bad. So, <laughs> this is an older kit. Uh, this contents is this one, the uh, the 7TP. So, i got to build another tank to put on here. It'll be sitting here kind of destroyed. And uh, the whole setting is going to be uh, village in Poland, dirt road, concrete sidewalk, and brick building. Obviously destroyed. There's going to be, you can kind of see where these little squares are at, right in there. There's going to be picket fence, like post. It's going to be a big tree here, and then all of this will be rubble. There's going to be an MG34 gunner, rifleman. I'm going to cut a hole into this side of the building, make it look like an uh, abandoned MG position from the Polish troops. You got the outline for the sidewalk. You have German troops running around at the pat gun to get across the street. You got the pat gun that's... Uh, Reloading and reacquiring a target, and then you got that dude pulling ammo. Uh, but yeah, and also things I'm gonna use for this. I'm trying to keep this strictly old kits only. So I say that I'm using two mini art kits: the farm cart and some accessories like barrels and milk jugs and things like that. I'll be using some of those uh, to add detail for most likely. Uh, Definitely the some of these accessories I may not use the farm cart. Let's we'll see, but older kits like the Tamiya Pat gun, the Heller Mansion House, the German Army Infantry set, uh, and yeah, that's that's really it. Trying to give some love to the older kits. They may not look the best, uh, but you know, still show them some love. They're cheap, and that you can really make a decent looking scene out of some old kits. Uh, now, something cool that came in the mail, or this uh, about a week ago, maybe. This is the Vallejo World War II paint set for the German infantry. Now, what's great about this, it's not just your regular Wehrmacht, uh, you know, field grain or field gray uniform. It's also, they also included colors for like the splinter camo and things like that. So, that's like, super exciting for me. I love, I love the splinter camo. I'm actually wearing my splinter camo jacket. It's my favorite German camo. Uh, so I'm excited to use this color set for these guys. Now, granted, you know, 1939, most of these guys, you know, all of them wore basically, uh, you can kind of see there, they had some helmet uh, Kevlar covers or helmet covers, but, you know, their uniforms were fairly gray, uh, field gray. So I'll do some more history and make sure all my facts are straight when it comes to the uniforms. But I know their boots are right. These are the early war boots they got. Uh, of course, the uh, early war anti-tank gun. Uh, yeah. Uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you all for watching. I will keep you guys updated with how things come along. Uh, don't be surprised if this doesn't come out until maybe next weekend, just because I don't want to over push, I don't want to push myself to to rush this and just get it done.
right? I may take a break from that for a day or two and work on the Battle for France, or I might build the, the 7TP. But this will be done within the next couple of weeks at the latest, hopefully within less than a week. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I will catch you guys later.